It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to be simplifying algebraic expressions by combining like terms and using the distributive property to write them in simplest form. Here we go. Our lesson objectives today are, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify if an algebraic expression is written in simplest form. You will be able to simplify algebraic expressions by combining like terms and you will simplify algebraic expressions by using the distributive property. So three key things to this lesson today. Here's what I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. How do you know if an algebraic expression is in simplest form? So that is what you're going to discover today and can answer on your own independently by the end of the video. Let's start by understanding what is an algebraic expression and all the parts of an algebraic expression. So to begin, an algebraic expression is a combination of variables, numbers, and at least one operation. So here we have three multiplied by X add five. So we have two operations, three multiplied by X. So there's an invisible multiplication. And then we have two terms being added to each other. When we consider the terms, we have a variable term, which is 3x. 3 multiplied by x is our variable term because we have the variable x that we don't know the value of. It represents a number. And then we have a constant term, which is positive 5. So we're adding positive 5. And then we have a coefficient. The coefficient is the amount of the variable you want. What is the multiplier to the variable? So three is our coefficient. It's three multiplied by x, three times x. So three is our numerical value in the variable term, and we call that the coefficient. And then we have our variable. Our variable here is x. It's a variable because the value of it could vary, meaning it can change. So I could say, what is this ex algebraic expression equivalent to? if the variable x is equal to 2. And then you can plug in 2 and evaluate the expression to know. But right now, we don't know what the variable x represents. Now let's talk about simplest form of an algebraic expression. When we talk about simplest form, we know that an algebraic expression is in simplest form when it has no parentheses. So this is not in simplest form because the expression contains parentheses. 2 multiplied by the quantity 3x minus 5. In simplest form, we would have to distribute to write it in simplest form. 6x subtract 10 is an equivalent in expression. We've cleared the parentheses by distributing, and now this is in simplest form. The other thing you want to check for is that the expression has no like terms. So here we have an algebraic expression that is not in simplest form, because it has two variable terms that are like terms. So in order to put it in simplest form, we would need to combine or add the variable terms, and now this is in simplest form. We have our variable term and a constant. Now let's do an activity of sorting algebraic expressions to test what you've just learned. Your task is to sort each algebraic expression into one of two groups simplest form or not simplest form. So we have five algebraic expressions and you are gonna determine if they go to simplest form or not simplest form. Go ahead and pause the video here, do your best to sort these, and then come back to see my work. Good luck. Welcome back. So let's sort these together. I'm gonna to start with the first one, one half x subtract eight. Seeing as there are no parentheses, and there are no um, like terms. There's only one variable term and one constant term. I'm gonna determine that one half X subtract eight is in simplest form and drag it and drop it. Let's look at our second. Three multiplied by the quantity two X subtract four has parentheses. Therefore, it's not in simplest form. So we're gonna drag and drop that over to not simplest form. In simplest form, you will not have parentheses. Let's look at the next one. 11x add nine, subtract seven x. I have two variable terms here. They're like terms. I could combine them, I could add them. 
So therefore, that is not simplest form. This one, 4x plus 10, that quantity, multiplied by 1 half. Since it has parentheses, it is not in simplest form, and I'm going to drag it over to not simplest form. And then our final algebraic expression, 9 add 6x. There's a constant term and a variable term. This is in simplest form. There is no parentheses and no like terms. So I'm going to drag and drop that to simplest form. All right, let's learn how to combine like terms so that you could simplify an expression. We have 5x subtract 2, subtract 7x, add 10. Step 1, we're going to rewrite this algebraic expression as addition. So we want to have repeated addition. I see subtract 2, subtract 7x. So I'm going to use my subtracting rule and change subtraction to add the opposite. So when I rewrite that, I'm going to add negative 2 and add negative 7x. Let's look at that. 5x, add negative 2, add negative 7x, add 10. This is equivalent to this, and now it's just repeated addition, and I can combine like terms. And that is my step two. I want to group like terms if necessary so that I can use the community property to place terms next to each other. Meaning what I want to do is I want to put negative two over with a positive 10 and I want to put 5x and 7x together. So let's rewrite that. 5x add negative 7x. Those are like variable terms. And then my negative two and my 10 are like constant terms. So I use the commutative property because once you have repeated addition, the order in which you add does not matter. So let's combine. In step three, we're going to add like terms. So we're going to add our variable terms. 5x and negative 7x give me negative 2x. And then we're going to add our constants. Negative 2 plus 10 is positive 8. Negative 2x add 8 is equivalent to this expression this is in simplest form. There are no like terms and no parentheses. All right, now it's your turn. When I ask you to simplify 6 plus 3x, subtract 8x, subtract 4, and I've given you the three steps to follow to organize your thinking. Please pause here, do your best work, and then come back to see mine. Good luck. Welcome back. So here's our solution. Step one, we're going to rewrite as addition. So we're going to rewrite subtract 8x to add negative 8x and add negative 4. So let's look at what that looks like. Here are our terms that are being subtracted, and we're going to rewrite as addition. Add negative 8x, add negative 4. So now it's repeated addition. So we're going to group like terms using the commutative property, because when I have repeated addition, order does not matter. So I want my variable terms next to each other and my constant terms next to each other. So I have 3x and negative 8x and 6 and negative 4. So let's rewrite that. 3x add negative 8x and negative 4 add 6. Equivalent, just grouping our terms. So now we're ready to add our like terms. So we have 3x and negative 8x and then our constants negative 4 and 6. 3x and negative 8x are negative 5x. Negative 4 add 6 is positive 2. So this expression in simplest form by combining like terms is negative 5x add 2. Let's try one combining like terms with fractions. 2 thirds x subtract 1, subtract 1 sixth x, subtract 4. If you think you've got this, go ahead and try. Pause here. If not, hang out with me. So we're going to do our first step, which is to rewrite as addition. So I'm going to see that I have negative 1, or subtract 1, and subtract 1 sixth x. So let's rewrite that. 2 thirds x, add negative 1, add negative 1 sixth x, add negative 4. Equivalent, just now it's repeated addition. So now our next step is to group our like terms using the commutative property, now that I have repeated addition since order doesn't matter when I add. So I'm going to put my variable terms together and then my constant terms together. So let's do that. 2 thirds x, add negative 1 sixth x are my variable terms, and then I have my negative 4 and add the negative 1. Now 
I need to get a common denominator to add my variable terms. I have a denominator of three and a denominator of six. So my common denominator would be six. So let's rewrite this. To make this two thirds a denominator of six, I'm gonna multiply both the numerator and denominator by two, which gives me four six x. Four six is equivalent to two thirds. And I keep my other terms the same. So now I am ready to add like terms. I have my variable terms and my constant terms. 4 6 x add negative 1 6 x is going to give me 3 6 x. Negative 4 and negative 1 are negative 5. So now I'm going to rewrite this in simplest form one step further. Some teachers might accept this, but we don't really want to have two operations next to each other, add negative five. We do this to make it easier for us to add, but it's not as neat as it could be to answer it. And three six can be simplified to one half. So one half X subtract five is the same as add negative five. So this expression in simplest, simplest form is one half X subtract five. Now let's apply this to the real world. We have some sneakers. The cost of a pair of sneakers after a 30% markup is represented by the expression S add 0.30 S or 3 tenths S or 30 hundredths S. We are asked to simplify this expression. So let's write our expression bigger so we can look at it. We have S add 0.30 S. We have two variable terms here. They have the same variable, the same exponent, so they are like terms. What I need you to understand is S is one S, and in algebra, that one is invisible. We don't typically write it. You can write it, but you don't need it. S is equivalent to one S. Any other number, you wanna put it there. So now we have one, we're gonna add the coefficients, one, plus 0 0.30 is gonna give me 1.30s, or one and 30 hundredths, which is, as a percent, 130%, and we're marking it up. So S is gonna be 130% of the original cost. So the store owner bought a pair of sneakers and they're gonna sell it to you for 130% what they paid, 130% times S, or written as a decimal, 1.30s. 100% of what they paid plus 30 more percent. All right, now it's your turn. The cost of a cell phone with 6.25% sales tax is represented by the expression C plus 0.0625C. You're asked to simplify the expression. Go ahead and pause here, do your best work, and then come back to see mine. Good luck. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So we need to rewrite this expression in simplest form. So let's write it larger, remembering that our coefficient of C here is one. So these are like terms, same variable, same exponent. Remember there's an invisible exponent of one here. So I'm gonna add the coefficients. So 1.0625 multiplied by C is in simplest form representing this, the cost of the cell phone and adding the 6.25% tax. So when I pay for it, I'm paying 106.25% of multiplied by the cost of the cell phone. Now let's talk about using the distributive property to simplify. So we have parentheses here. I need to clear the parentheses or distribute this factor outside the parentheses to write it in simplest form. So what we're gonna do is set up a graphic organizer. I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. So here's my graphic organizer. I'm gonna take my factor negative three and put it outside. And then I'm gonna take my two terms that are inside, my variable term negative four X and my positive six. Now I'm gonna use this as an area model to multiply. Negative three times negative four X gives me positive 12 X. Then negative three times six is negative 18. So, I'm gonna rewrite that as 12X, add negative 18, and that's equivalent to this. You could also just use a horizontal method over here that I know I need to distribute or share negative three to the negative four X where I'm multiplying, which is 12X, and then I gotta multiply negative three to the second term, negative three times six is negative 18, 
And there we have it. 12x subtract 18 is our simplified expression. So I like students to use this method because I think that they never forget to multiply the second set of terms. Often students would tell me that this is 12x plus 6 and they forget to distribute to the second term. You need to share negative 3 to each term inside. All right, your turn. Pause the video here and do your best work. Good luck. Welcome back. So here is our solution. We've written it big. I'm going to do it both ways. Here's our area model. We're going to put our factor, negative 6, here, and our two terms above, 2x and then our negative 1. Negative 6 multiplied by 2x is negative 12x. Negative 6 multiplied by negative 1 is going to give us positive 6. Let's do it horizontally where we just multiply. Negative 6 times 2x is negative 12x. Negative 6 multiplied by negative 1 is positive 6. So negative 12x plus 6 is our equivalent simplified algebraic expression. And there you have it. That is how we simplify algebraic expressions by combining like terms or using the distributive property to clear parentheses. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you subscribe, have a great day, and see you soon.